Today, I will show you three methods of creating floors. Let's start with the method of using materials with a displacement map to create floors. For today's tutorial, I will be using the kitchen scene from our visualization training. In case you want to check it out, I put the link in the corner. So the first step is to choose the closest possible map to the output you need. I always start my research in my library using Project Manager. Let's say that I need a herringbone wooden floor, something like this. It is material from Polygon, I put the link to it in the description as well. Normally, I would drag and drop the material from the Project Manager as it's already in my library. But I use the Polygon Material Converter to show you how to import it first. So we need to choose the path where the textures are saved. Then, we need to choose the renderer, and at the end, just click load one material. Now, we can just drag and drop the material from the temporary tab in the material editor. Now, let's apply the material to the floor model. Let's make the texture visible in the viewport. We also need to apply the UVW map modifier to adjust the mapping. Let's say we want something like this. Let's start interactive rendering to see how it looks. At the first glance, it looks good, but let's take a closer look. We can see that it is not perfect. We can see that the displacement is an issue. We can, of course, adjust it. We can reduce the value. As you can notice, this method will work great in cases when the floor is not too close to the camera. This method is the easiest and probably the fastest of all. On the other hand, it is really limited as you have no possibility to adjust the patterns. You need to find the material that is as closest as possible to the output you need. We cannot change, for example, the floorboard size or shape, but we can still adjust its color by using a color correction map, for instance. So we have some control, but not too much. Typically, there are many methods of doing the same thing in 3ds Max. Some are faster, others are more precise, some are easier or more difficult. So here is another method. We'll be using the Floor Generator plugin that, after installation, you can find in Modifiers Rollout. Here, you can choose the floor pattern. I have standard here, which are the typical floor panels. You can notice that the floorboards were created inside the line borders. We have the possibility to adjust the board size parameters. We can change the length and width of the board, for instance. We can also manipulate the size of the crowd. Offset controls how much each row of boards should be offset. Extrude is the height of the floor. We can adjust the bevel as well. We can also add some variations per board, for example, the max tilt. It adds realism, as in real life, nothing is perfect, remember? There are some general settings as well. For instance, change the direction of the boards, or general offset. Thanks to these options, all boards will automatically receive their own UV mapping. Now, I am using the free version of the plugin that has only the standard pattern, but you can purchase the full version to get additional patterns if you wish. This method gives you much better results. For this reason, it is perfect for cases when the floor is close to the camera. As it has the most popular patterns included, you can use this in most cases. However, if in the project there is a pattern they don't have, you need to use another method. Worth mentioning is that the floor generator generates only geometry, so we additionally need to deal with materials as well. On the CG Source website, they have a special plugin called Multi Texture Map that works with a floor generator and assign multiple textures randomly to the boards. It is free, by the way. So here is an example of the material with the use of the Multi Texture Map plugin. After installation, you will find it in the general maps. The more textures you will use, the better the result. The textures also come from the same website. 
Let me show you the preview of the board as an example. You just need to apply the material to the object with the floor generator and it's done. Eventually, you will need to adjust the mapping. And finally, the last method, using Recon plugin by Ito Software. This is definitely the most powerful method and it's perfect for all kinds of images. For the floors that are close to the camera, as well as those that are front for it. It doesn't load the main file, so working in it, especially if you have a big scene, is way faster. To create a real comb object, we need to go to Geometry, Ito Software, and choose Real Comb Pro if we have a paid version. However, there is also a free light version that has some limitations. Anyway, I put the link to this plugin in the description below the video as well. We'll also need an object that will define the floor borders, in my case, the line. Let's isolate both objects. Now, we can choose some ready-to-use flooring from the Ray Clone library. They have different patterns to choose from. Let's take this one as an example. So, first of all, we need to choose our floor spine. You can see that it doesn't look exactly like a shape on the preview. It is because of the type of display to optimize working with this. We can change it if we need to, but it is always better to keep it like this after editing as the viewport will work better. Another cool thing about it is that we can change the basic parameters. For example, that rotation will rotate everything by the specified angle. We can also offset the floorboards by a specific value in the z-axis direction. Another parameter to change is the randomization of the boards in the z-axis, so it looks more natural, instead of perfectly even. And finally, in this flooring type, we can also set up the number of materials, which in this case is 20. Let me show you the preview. Ok, let's use the region to see the results more quickly. It looks way better than the texture when we have a close-up. I would decrease the value as it looks too uneven. As you can notice, this flooring comes with textures. Let me show you the material. It is multi-sub material with 20 materials included as we set up in the Raycon. We can of course adjust the color or contrast of the maps if we want. Or we can replace the materials completely with our own materials. Also, the plugin gives us the possibility to edit flooring by using Style Editor. This technique is also the most complicated of all, especially if you want to create a specific pattern by yourself. It requires knowledge and practice. I will show you a quick example of how to create herringbone flooring with the Raycon plugin, but it has way more potential than this. First, let's create the object. And let's open the style editor. This is where the pattern is created. Firstly, we need to change the generator. In our case, it will be array to s. Also, we'll need a segment and a spline. We can change the name of objects to make them easier for us to work with. We need to plug the spline into the clipping area, so this will be the area where the floor should be created. And the board will be our default object. Now, we need to add a specific object to the board. I've quickly modeled this one before. And also, let's add our spline as a clipping area. It looks like nothing is happening. It is because we need to turn on one option. Ok, now let's go back to the array to S and let's turn the extend XY size to area. Here we go. We can see it now, but this is obviously not the effect we want. Firstly, we want to have the boards mirror every two objects. Here, we'll use the mirror operator. However, as we want to have it for every two objects, we need to add a Compose operator as well. We can also drag and drop it from here. Anyway, so now we're making sort of an object that includes our base model and the one that is mirrored. 
But there is the next issue. We have this gap here. It is because it is created from the start to the end of the bounding points of the object. This is easy to fix though. We can go to the segment parameters and adjust the top padding value. The value needs to be even smaller. But the recon object disappeared completely. Go to the display build tab and increase the limits. Here we go. The floor is back. I will reduce the value a bit more. Perfect. If you would like to move the mirrored objects from each other, we can do it in the padding as well. We can change the right value, for example. OK, it looks good. There is one more issue that can occur. If we zoom out, you can see that the pattern doesn't fill the whole area. Again, we can easily fix this. We need to increase the expand in the clipping area tab in the array settings. Easy, the problem is fixed. Also, randomization is possible. For example, we can randomly move the individual boards in z-axis. It's obviously too big, but I wanted you to see it clearly. You can adjust it to your needs. This has way more potential and you can create really complicated stuff here, but I wanted to show you the idea. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see other tutorials from the Rayclone plugin. In the end, we can, for instance, add the material operator to apply IDs to the boards randomly. We can also choose a sequence. Anyway, we can increase the value here. And later, we can apply similar material to the floor as I shown you before. Here, we set the number of the materials in the multi sub material. If you want to learn how to create visualizations from start to finish, join our visualization training. Also, watch my other videos here on YouTube. Bye bye!